Hi, some of you may know me already, but for those who don't, my name is Debbie Domingo and I am one of the survivors in California's Golden State Killer case. The Golden State Killer is known to have committed at least 100 burglaries, 50 rapes, and 13 murders in California in the 1970s and 80s. My mother was one of those murder victims. Up until recently, the identity of the Golden State Killer had been a mystery. He had been hiding in plain sight for nearly 40 years. But thanks to a handful of dedicated investigators and the miracle of DNA science, our case was solved in April of 2018. And the suspected perpetrator has been arrested and is now awaiting what will undoubtedly be the trial of the century. My own personal story is a long one, and there are lots of ways that you can learn more about that, but that's not why I'm here today. Right now, I want to talk to you about genetic genealogy and a publicly accessible website called GEDmatch.com. When investigators were looking for the Golden State Killer, they knew they were looking for a needle in a haystack. What they had was the killer's DNA profile which had been collected from several of the crime scenes in this series. What they didn't have was a match. They had searched every criminal DNA database there is and couldn't find a face or a name to go with this profile. For decades, there were no viable suspects. But with advances in DNA science and with the accessibility of GEDmatch.com, the playing field changed. They were able to search more thoroughly, and they finally were able to locate a very distant familial match in the GEDmatch system. With that match, they built an enormous family tree, and then spent months researching, narrowing down, weeding out hundreds of potential matches. They were finally able to zero in on a single suspect, surveil him, and collect not just one, but two DNA samples, confirming that they had indeed identified the notorious Golden State Killer. It was a moment that made history, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. As you can imagine, GEDmatch has received a lot of attention in the year that has passed. The results have been phenomenal. To my knowledge, Suspects in approximately 60 cold case crimes have been arrested and positive identifications on 11 John or Jane Doe's have been made. My head just spins when I think about the progress that's being made and the potential for even more progress with the use of this technology. But as you might expect, there are people in the public arena who have voiced some concern about the privacy of DNA in the GEDmatch system. And that's understandable. People should be able to decide whether police should have access to their DNA material or not. It makes sense. So with that in mind, the founders of GEDmatch have made some revisions to their site policy. That revision is spelled out at the top of the GEDmatch Genesis homepage. As of May 18, 2018, all GEDmatch user profile kits have been set to a default of public without law enforcement access. Now I'm going to explain this a little bit. There are four settings in the GEDmatch system for privacy. There's private, which means no one has access. There's research, which means it's available for research only. Then there's public without law enforcement access and public with law enforcement access. So let me go back to this. The recent revision as of May 18 set all DNA kit profiles to public without law enforcement access. This means that in order for law enforcement to have access to your samples, you need to go back in and change your profile policy to that setting that says public with law enforcement access, public opt-in. Now, let me give you a little bit of detail about GEDmatch. They have a total of over 1,225,000 kits in the system. So far, since the revision, 
only about 26,000 of those have opted back in for law enforcement use. I believe that most of the users are not aware of the change and do not realize that they need to take action in order to stay accessible. So that's why I'm here today. I'm here to encourage all of you to help with this effort. We need to get as many GEDmatch users as possible opted in for law enforcement use. So I'm going to give you some things to do. There's three very simple steps. The first one you may have already done. It's very popular. The first step, run your DNA. You can send it to any of the testing facilities that are out there. You can use Ancestry or 23 or Heritage or Family Tree. Any of those will do. And as you're doing that, you can learn more about your own family, your ancestry, your heritage, where you came from. It's really a fascinating thing to do. Second step though, that I'm asking you to do, after you've run your DNA, second step is to take your raw data profile that you get from that company and upload it to gedmatch.com. You'll create a Gedmatch account and your upload will be assigned a kit number. Now the third step is to go to that kit number and assign the profile uh, privacy on that kit. So again, the options, private, research, public opt out, or public opt in. And I want to encourage you, choose public with law enforcement access, public opt in. Now, it can be a little bit confusing. There are instructions on the GEDmatch website for how to make these changes. They also have linked to some helpful videos, so be sure and use those helps if you need them. That's really all I needed to say today, with one big exception. I need to extend a huge thank you to the over 1 million GEDmatch users who already had their DNA material accessible. You are the ones who made it possible for my mom's murder to be solved. And I am so grateful. But this is not about me. This is not about Golden State Killer. Golden State Killer was the tip of the iceberg. There are an unknown amount of vicious, dangerous monsters still out there hiding in plain sight that need to be identified. There are an unknown number of unidentified remains that need names and faces, whose families deserve closure. They need our help. They need your help. So today I'm asking you to do two things, take action and spread the word. Take action by following those three steps, run your DNA, upload to GEDmatch, and opt in for law enforcement access. And then after you've done that, spread the word. Tell everybody you know to do the same thing. We need to build up this law enforcement access in GEDmatch. So that's it. That's my pitch. On behalf of Victims Everywhere, I want to thank you. I want to encourage you. By doing this, it's going to be the best thing you've ever done. You're going to feel great about yourself, and you're going to be part of the future of crime solving. Justice for all. Thank you very much.